Santana's got some fresh bottom paint and is almost ready to splash. Before she returns to her natural habitat, we've got one more exciting project to tackle so we can live, work and travel completely off-grid. She's already set up to produce her own power and today we will show you how we will now be able to transform the ocean around us into drinking water for as little as 2,500 euros. Why are you getting a water maker? Because I really, really, really want to have a water maker. Um, normally I'm staying at, uh, at Anchorage and um, for the last summers I was always around Elba and in the summer it is really difficult to get into any marina in the Mediterranean. And if you just want to sneak in there to get some water, it's even more difficult. So I had to be super, super careful with water consumption. Um, and now that we are leaving to areas where, well, it might also be short of water and maybe the water quality isn't that great. And as I'm drinking the, the water out of the, the tanks, I would like to have super fresh water. And I'm, I'm dreaming about a water maker for quite a long time, but there were other projects that were more important first. Yes. And one important thing that I want to say is that some of you might know that I have the Rainman water maker on Carl the portable version, the 110 mm. volt, and I'm absolutely happy with it. it. It runs perfectly. I am debating if I'm gonna make the portable version into the fixed version when I get back to my boat, but that is the only thing that I'm contemplating. I'm super happy. Um, the reason why we're not going with Rainman, but with Octopus Watermaker is... That I found out about them when I looked for DIY versions. And um, while searching general options for water makers, I dived into a couple of DIY projects and they all looked super complicated. Um, and it wasn't that easy to get the, the parts and the spare parts. And all of a sudden, Octopus Water Maker popped up. Um, and it's a, a German guy, an engineer, who is building the water makers there himself. And he's using single components and you can buy every single component in his shop or you could call him and he's going to send it out to you. And I thought that gives me a lot of options to maybe improve it in the future or replace any missing parts. Yeah, it's super easy to re replace anything because they're basically parts that you can get at any hardware store. So you don't have to mm. get like any marine supply stuff or specific water maker related things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a spectator sitting over there. And he's looking at us <laughs> like, like we're this. talking to him. Uh, the option or the um, the solution of, of Octopus is that they are using a standard Kercher, high pressure cleaning. And um, it's the smallest version and that costs about uh, 50 to 60 bucks, um, the entire thing. And he said, you know, you can get the spare parts, but just have two on board. If anything breaks, you can just replace the thing. Um, and um, I'm super curious to find out how, how that's going to work. Yeah, and he's been in the business for a while. I think he said that he sold uh, 60 to 70 water mm -hmm. makers. And he's like, I think he's a one man show. Yes. He's doing a super great customer service. Flo was just on the phone texting him about some stuff about the installation. Mm -hmm. um, the manual is super great. Like everything is photographed in detail and labeled. And He's even explaining which um, which screw you have to tighten with Teflon band and how many, how many rounds, 10 rounds, and then how many uh, rounds you have to screw it in. Yeah. So it's very detailed, very German, very nerdy. <laughs> so you're liking it. <laughs> and the quality seems to be, seems to be good. I think Octopus is combining two things. On the one hand, it is DIY style. Everything is replaceable. On the other hand, Everything comes in one package and it's super easy to install. And looks beefy as well. And it comes at a good price tag. So if you're thinking about buying one, I think that is a... Yeah, I think that Paul, my friend Paul in El Salvador, that you might remember, he's building that houseboat. He has also been wanting to build one himself and he's looked up all the stuff by himself mm -hmm. and sort of putting a package together. And I think he came up to something around 2000. But that is like getting everything yourself, yes. not knowing exactly yeah. if it's going to match up. And and this one comes at what, 2,500? Yes, 
And Pretty much exactly. Yeah, yeah and then everything there, super beefy, super high quality yeah. with a nice manual. By the way, in case you're interested in getting one of the Octopus water makers, we've gotten you a sweet little deal. Udo told us that purchasing is taking place over email or phone, and I'll put the link to the details in the description. So when you're talking to him about buying one of the water makers, make sure you mention that we've sent you and you'll get 100 euros off your purchase price. Yay! But back to the video. Okay, well, I think that's it. Shall we dive in? The box. Yeah. Well, but well, first I have to get everything out of the box. Well, let's get going. This is starting to look more and more like Carl. <laughs> One big difference though, I'm going to put it away when I'm done. See how it's going. Well, it's it's going tight. Inside of this box, we have um, a couple of water things already installed. So there's a an, an heat exchanger that is heating the water supply or the water of the boat when oh. the engine is running. So I already have a couple of hoses. That's why I chose this. I would like to mount the water maker out of the way um, or as, as high up as possible so that there are no 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 ropes and no boxes lying on top of it so it's it's staying free and uh, this is why i chose this place all the way over there on the back side of this box is the bulkhead our 220 volt inverter is on the other side of the of the wall so it's quite um, short connections um, and now I'm figuring out a way to mount it because it seems like on this side up is the best way to keep all the um, instruments out of the way but then I have to bolt it somehow to the outer wall to the hull and I don't want to do that so I found two um, stringers that also serve as um, cable canals um, throughout the boat um, and I'm going to uh, screw a v vertical wood to this and I'm going to just glue the top side to the um, to the hull. This doesn't have to carry any strings because it will be um, tightened to the to the canal as well. Um, and up here it's just to keep it to keep it tight and I will just use some thickened epoxy to glue it to the to the wall and then the good thing is when I mount this I can connect the water maker as far up as possible and then I can use some horizontal wood or boards um, further down and I can connect all of the filters there that's the theory <laughs> let's see how the theory will be put into action I'm just standing by out here <laughs> It's not my strongest suit, I have to admit. It feels kind of useless. But I do know from the other perspective that it's so helpful to just have someone standing by. So <laughs> I'm trying my best here. Hey Han, you need anything? Any advice? Yeah, advice. Un unsolicited advice? Yes, <laughs> preferably advice. <laughs> Are you sure that's right? No, I have no idea what I'm going. I think he's doing all right. Okay, so before all of this magic disappears into the belly of this boat, I'm gonna give you a quick run through how this system works. So. The raw water comes in here at this first pre-filter and then this little pump will pump it up here 
And these two valves are one directional valves, so the water can only go up here through these two finer filters. Then the water comes out here, and then the water goes into here, and you can read the pressure of this section that is previous of the pressure section. Then the water will go from here into the pressure washer. Then it goes through the pressure hose into the housing of the membrane. Then the water moves through here. And on this side here, you have two exits. One is for the remaining salt water that goes overboards. And one is the fresh water that goes into your tank. Now, the nice thing about this is that it's a self-flushing system. So you can connect your fresh water system, the house system, to this little gem. And then if you want to just flush the system with fresh water, the fresh water goes through here, through the filter. Now, it cannot go this way because these are one way, one directional valves. So it goes through here and then it actually goes through the pressure washer, but it's not switched on when you're flushing the system because it just flushes the system without building up any pressure. Now that's how the water runs through the whole system. Now electrical wise, there's two connections that you need to hook up. One is this little 12 volt pump that goes to this little switch and then to your house batteries. And then there is this little plug that is going wherever you have 220 volts. And this is where you plug in the pressure washer. And for this little thing, you have a little remote control. So you can actually switch this on and off. You don't have to crawl into wherever you have this installed. So you only have to check this if you want to inspect it, but you can actually switch it on and off with this little gem. Now, what you probably want to know is how much water does this little machine produce? It's 60 liters an hour. And the power consumption is mainly the pressure washer, so that's around 1.3 to 1.5 kilowatts. And I think that's about it. Pretty nifty, huh? I don't know about you, but I'm definitely excited to see it running. And remember, if you're interested in one of these little gems, then there's a link to this product and to more information in the description of the video. Now it's time to prep all the components of the water maker for installation. First, Flo connected the 10 mm hose to the fresh water tank through the TTSD unit, which measures the total dissolved solids in the freshly made water. Then he connected another 10 mm hose to the high pressure membrane unit, which spits out the brine, complete with all the filtered out salt and yuck. Trust me, you don't wanna mix up those two hoses. Next up, wrapping all the screw-on plumbing connectors with Teflon tape to ensure there are no leaks for water to drip out or air to sneak in, both of which you definitely want to avoid. Oh, and don't forget to double check the in and out directions while you're at it. Once the filters were assembled, it was time for the ultimate boat Tetris challenge, fitting all these components into the small port cockpit locker. So I think Flo has been at it since 10 this morning with a very short break in between and driving to the hardware store to get some stuff that he still didn't need, still need it for the installation. And it's seven now, so six full hours, including going to the hardware store. That's pretty impressive. It's not quite done yet. So what's still missing is the flushing system. So that will come later, but everything else is installed. Finally, we connected the water maker to Santana's water system. Since this setup is unique for every boat, the specific parts aren't included in the kit, but they're simple enough to pick up at a hardware store. You'll need a hose from the 10 micron filter to the 12 volt pump that sits on the salt water strainer. 
Flo mounted his in the bilge in a compartment where the sump pump for his shower sits. And from there, he ran a hose to the kitchen sink, which has a salt water intake already. You'll also need a hose to connect the other end of the 10 micron filter to the Kercher with a Gardena fitting. And voila, ready to turn the ocean into drinking water. I'm sensing a slight bit of exhaustion. And Do you? Possibly a bit of... Hungry! Hangriness here. <laughs> and it's very interesting to be on the other end of it. <laughs> Question is... Will it run? Robocop, Robocop says... Maybe! <laughs> We need to be in the water first. Well, that went a lot faster and smoother than we expected. Tomorrow, Santana will splash and we will run the water maker for the very first time. But more about that next week.